So we are now, today we're going over graphing cube root functions, which will be very similar to when we talked about graphing cubic functions. So if you have those notes, then these ones will seem pretty simple. General form y equals a. And now instead of having parentheses, we have the cube root, which is the square root with the 3. x minus eight is inside that and then plus k is outside. And our parent function is just y equals the cube root of x, which is just the square root sign with that 3. So that means taking the cube root of something, you have to multiply it three times basically and take it out front. So when we had a perfect cube now, so the cube roots that you're looking at would be the cube root of 1 is 1, the cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 27 is 3. So basically whatever number multiplied by itself three times, that is how you find cube roots. So, and just like we've done before, A, when it is positive, we can't say it opens up or down because it has an inflection point. So it goes from the bottom left. to the top right. And so it looks something like this. And where its domain and its range are both all reals. The domain and range are both all reals. If A is negative, the graph goes from the top left to the bottom right. So basically it's going downhill when it's negative, it's going uphill when it's positive. And this also means it reflects across or over the x-axis. So here it starts top and goes lower. And same thing, domain and range are both all reals. Each of these has one x-intercept and one y-intercept one and only one of each. And so you'll notice the big difference between these graphs and cubic graphs. Cubes grow very quickly. Cube roots do not grow very quickly. They, it takes them a while to get bigger. Our inflection point is still at HK. And when we're making our table, we, this is our central point of the table. H always identifies our horizontal value or the horizontal shift. And K is our vertical shift. So nothing different than any other function we've dealt with this year. Okay. If A is between 0 and 1, then we say the graph is vertically compressed. And we should say the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1. And then if the absolute value of A is greater than 1, then the graph is vertically stretched. We move over. Remember, the h value, x is lie, it's opposite, always go opposite. So to move left, it's positive h, move right, it's negative. Vertical shifting, however, stays the same. It's outside of the cube root. So up is positive and down is negative. So as you, if you can look at the graphs I have here, they each already have the parent function graphed inside of them. And so we're going to be graphing three points. Basically, the three points are going to be where the inflection point is, one spot to the right, and one to the left. So if we look at one-half times the cube root of x, that means we're, it's being compressed by one-half. So that means when we move, when the cube root of one is one multiplied by one-half, so that puts that point there, so it's kind of moving like that. And when we do negative one, the cube root of negative one is negative one, one half times negative one is negative one half. 
So it's going to be a very flat graph. It's going to be very close to the x-axis. y equals 2 times cube root of x. Now it's being stretched by 2. So now when we move 1 to the right, it's going up to 2. When we move 1 to the left, it's going down to 2. So this one is going to start and then levels out. They always start and they're immediately growing, but then they grow at a less rate than they had been. So when the graphing between negative 1 and 1, it's always going to be growing bigger and getting smaller quickly. And then after that point, it levels out. It's cube root of x minus 3. This means it's shifting right 3. So that means everything that happened on this graph, on the parent function, we shift to the right 3. So it looks something like that. And then the last one, square root of, cube root of x minus 3 means down 3. So the inflection point is here, we move down 3. And it's going to look exactly the same as the parent function. So um, hopefully you're using the calculators on your computers or Desmos. Now let's flip over to the next page. All right, now on the back side, we have a few examples we're going to work out. It says draw a table with at least three points to plot, graph the equation, name the inflection point, and then describe the transformations. So if we look at the first one, we have one-fourth times the cube root of x plus 5. So the transformations, we know the one-fourth means compress by one-fourth. The 5 on the inside, we know x is lie, so that means shift 5 left. So that means our inflection point, if we shifted 5 to the left, it's going to be right here at negative 5, 0. So now when we're graphing x and y, I'm using the inflection point as my middle point, negative 5, 0. I'm going to use negative 4 and negative 6. When I plug in negative 4, I have 1 fourth times the cube root of negative 4 plus 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So that means it's negative 1 times 1 fourth, so that's negative 1 fourth. Same thing, uh, or actually, sorry, it's positive, positive 1 fourth. Then we do negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So this one would be negative 1 fourth. So if you look, these points are going to be just kind of like that. So this graph is staying very flat, as you can see. It's not going to grow very quickly at all. Um, did we list everything? We've got the inflection point, transformation, and then graph three points. Okay, number two, cube root of x minus 2 plus 3. So we know that x minus 2, x is lie, so it's going to be shift right two units. And then the plus 3 means shift up. 3. So if we go right 2 and up 3, we're going to be right there. That means our inflection point is at 2, 3. It should match your transformation, so make sure you're matching them. Then our plotting points. 2, 3 is going to be our middle point. I'm going to use x is 1 and x is 3. You're always going to use 1 to the left and 1 to the right of the inflection point. Well, when x is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And when we plug in 3, 3 minus 2 is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So we're at 1, 2, 
and three, four. So you plot these, don't draw this like a straight line. It's gonna go like this and like this, okay? It has to have that shape that looks like the cube root shape. It's not gonna be a straight line. It has that, so if you look in here, right in here, it has that distinctive loop, loop. Okay, it's kind of S-shaped. All right, so number three. We have negative three cube root of x. So that means we know the negative means it reflects across the x-axis. Sorry, hard to draw S's. And the three means it's stretched by three. Our inflection point is at zero, zero. So we're right there. When we graph points, We have zero, zero. We're gonna use negative one and one. When we use negative one, negative three times negative, cube root of negative one is three. So we're gonna be up here. And then negative three times the cube root of one is negative three. So it's gonna be here. And then if we plot another point when we're at negative eight, we'll be up here at six. So this graph looks like this. This one looks like that. And so feel free to check on Desmos or the graphing calculator how these graphs actually look. Okay, so that's graphing them. Now, number four, write a cube root function matching the description below. The graph of y equals cube root of x has been transformed so its inflection point is zero, negative six, reflected over the x-axis and is vertically compressed. So, we'll start with what we know. We know cube root of x is in it. Zero, negative six for the inflection point means it shifts zero left or right. So inside here, inside the cube root, there's nothing. Outside, we have a minus six because we have to shift down six. It's reflected so that means it's going to be negative and it's compressed 0.7 so negative 0.7 out front negative 0.7 I know it shifted nothing in here I'm going to rewrite this as negative 0.7 cube root of x all of it minus 6 okay now, once again, when we're given a graph and have to decide what it is, that can be a little more difficult. First, you want to find the inflection point. Inflection point is at negative 2, 0. So that means we know if we use our general form, flip it over, y equals a times cube root of x minus h plus k. So you know h and k. h, so it's going to be y equals a, and it shifted 2 to the left. So that's x plus h, and then it shift up or down. So the k is 0. So we have y equals a times cube root of x plus 2. Now we have to figure out what our a value is. So we just pick a point that's on the graph. I'm going to pick this point here, negative 1, 3, and I'm going to plug those in. So now I know y is 3, a cube root of negative 1 plus 2. So 3 equals a times the cube root of 1, which is just 1. So a is 3. So our final y equals 3 times the cube root of x plus 2. 
So you find H and K from your inflection point. You find A by plugging in another point into that equation. And that is cube roots.